Welcome back to Advent of Code 2025. Today we're given a sequence of math problems that are done with either adding or multiplying a bunch of numbers together. They're arranged a bit strangely. We get a long horizontal list with a bunch of uh, vertically written problems. So for example, this worksheet contains four problems, two of which are multiplication and two of which are addition. To check the work, we need to submit the grand total of summing all of the answers to the individual problems. Okay, so first let's grab our input. Um, what I am going to do is take each line and split it on the white space, and this will give us basically a list of numbers, and then the last list will be a list of symbols. And then we can use the zip function to go column by column, which will give us each problem. So the lines are going to be line dot strip to remove the potential leading and trailing white space dot split if you call it with no argument then it will just split on any amount of white space so this allows us to split by multiple spaces and then for line in open zero and then we will get the columns by zipping. So columns equals zip lines. The star operator here basically uh, unpacks each attribute from each of the elements of lines into an individual element uh, argument. So it'll look something like this. And so that'll allow us to go column by column through each of the lines, which will give us something like this. And then for each column, the last symbol is the operator and everything before is the numbers. So if we do this, we are taking each column and unpacking it into any number of elements as the nums and then the last one as the operator. So we'll get something like this and then we can do op.join nums to get an equation and then we can use the eval function to evaluate the result of the computation and that will give us this which will give us our answer for part one. Moving on to part two, uh, turns out cephalopod math is not done the same way as we expected. Um, instead, it's written right to left in columns. So basically this formula, if we take this and zip it, we'd get uh, something that looks like this. Um, we get something that looks like this. Basically what this gives us now is our equations. So for example, the first one, instead of being one, two, three times four, five times six, is now going to be four plus four, three, one plus six, two, three. And so going through each of the columns in any order, we can we don't actually have to reverse it because um, addition and multiplication are both commutative. Basically, we now want to separate this into groups, splitting on columns that consist of just spaces. So let's first assemble the groups. So for each column, if the column only contains spaces, then we'll append the current group and reset the group that we're tracking. Otherwise, we'll append our current line to the current group that we're tracking. And so that'll give us this. And so each group 
will be an equation. So for example, uh, going right to left or left to right doesn't really matter here. So our first um, or last doesn't matter. Problem will be 1 times 24 times 356, which we can see is this. Again, the ordering doesn't matter for addition or multiplication. And so now what we can do is the operator is equal to the last element of the first sublist of the group. And so we can take that and join the remaining numbers. And so for each line in the group, the last column is always either going to be the operator or a space for the rows that don't have an operator. So we can do this to remove the last element, or we can just do this. And then if we join on the empty string, that'll basically take everything here and turn it into a number. And so if we print that out, we'll get a bunch of weird spacing, but the white space doesn't matter. We can still evaluate it anyway. And that'll give us our answer for part two. So thank you for watching. That's all for today's video. And I'll see you again tomorrow for day seven.